Hey everyone, this is Nate, and this is the Nader Tater Channel Art. Right, today I have another update for the T-Mobile, and this is specifically the Arcadian KVD-21 Gateway. It's black and kind of rectangular, but don't confuse it with the Sagemcom one, which is a little bit different. So, this is for how to, you know, I call it a hack, you can call it whatever you want, but basically how you can get in there and mess with settings, and the number one setting that people ask for, well, other than port forwarding and getting rid of my NAT, is how I turn off the Wi-Fi on this. And one of the reasons you might want to turn off the Wi-Fi is because it helps take off any kind of load on the unit, which we've seen it make um, units uh, run cooler and faster. And additionally, there's benefit of not having more Wi-Fi uh, in your house or apartment, wherever you're at. So turning it off so you can hook on your own router system is uh, really the best thing to do. It's not required, but it does help. Now, obviously, if you're not on Wi-Fi, you'll need to have Ethernet in one of the two connectors back there. It either goes to your computer, like in my case right here, or it goes to your uh, router or your switch that you then send the um, the data traffic or the Internet to other places. Now, I've done a couple videos of scripts that use PowerShell for um, modifying the configurations or the settings in here. And I've had a lot of comments about people saying, hey, it doesn't work, or there's a new firmware update, must not work. I think there's a Reddit post that maybe goes in there and tries to blame it um, that T-Mobile is on to us and is changing this. That is not the case. The old code still works. Uh, I think, honestly, it's people typing in the wrong password. And um, it, it's case sensitive. Everything has to match up right. The password, the default one that's on here, it's on the sticker on the back for this Arcadian unit. Uh, there's a Wi-Fi password, which is not the one you use for the script. And then there's a uh, admin IP, and then there's a username, which is admin, and then there's the admin password. The admin password, the most, the bottom one on the sticker, is the one you use uh, when it asks for a password. So that has to be typed in correctly. It has to, uh, if you updated it and you forgot that you updated it. You need to uh, remember that password or factory reset the device back to that. So that's what I'll say. The number one uh, comment I get in the old video is it doesn't work anymore. Uh, it does work. You got to type in passwords correctly. So uh, this other script, uh, the user that helped out in the past, uh, Zachary, he's helped out again. And in fact, he sent this to me uh, a while ago and I just haven't put it up yet. But uh, this gives you... A easier download and update of the configuration files which give you a little bit more parameters than just turn on Wi-Fi turn off Wi-Fi and uh, and reboot this gives you um, all the configurations that are in that uh, file there it's still a limited set but let's go through I'll show you how you do that and uh, if you have any questions feel free to put them in the uh, comments below but do make sure you use the password correctly first before you ask that question of does it work um, and then if it really doesn't work, do let me know if you run into issues. There have been some bugs or some things we found before, and it's good to let me know what those are. I can see if I can get them fixed. Also, if you have a uh, Apple computer, a Mac, uh, PowerShell can actually be downloaded and ran on Mac. So um, that's uh, no upside to PowerShell. Is actually it uh, works for both Windows and Mac. I'll show the demo here on Windows. All right, so first things first, obviously you need to be connected to this with, I'm assuming, your computer. Now, you can do it over Wi-Fi, uh, but of course, if you turn off Wi-Fi, then you'll have to hook up by Ethernet afterwards. For this one, since I am going to be messing with Wi-Fi on and off, it's easier for me just to have Ethernet plugged in and communicate that way. But the way you can make sure that you're connected to this device versus something else is you should be, go, you should be able to go to your web browser on your computer and type in 192.168.12.1 and that should get you to the landing page of the web interface for this device. If you cannot access that then you're not connected to it and this will not work. Um, the other thing is you really need to make sure that password is correct so um, you, if you want to check the password you can use your app you know on your phone and log into it and typically ask for your password um, to get into that so that's another way you can do it alright so since I haven't made the video yet I can't show you on the this current one but here's the last video I made 
with this um, the script setup. You can see down here in the video description down below, I have to hit show more and then it will um, give you the link to the pastebin site as well as another very important detail which I'll show you here in a second and that is a PowerShell command to run if you have not ran one of my scripts or someone else's um, unsigned scripts before. So um, what you can do here is obviously if you click the pastebin link, not this specific one because uh, this is the other one, but this new one, it will bring you to this pastebin website and this is basically just a text document. And so you can um, select it all and hit copy. You can hit this copy button. But the easiest is to download it as a text file. And I download it um, by right clicking. If you left click, it will just download to your downloads folder. But I like to right click and save link as. And then I am going to save it into this folder that I already have set up here. Which is right here. So that is... All you have to do to download the file, and it's just a text file. If you were to double click it, you would see you'd open it up, and it is exactly the same as what the pastebin um, text shows you there. So that's what that is. If you don't see the extensions, this .txt or .ps1, then you'll need to add that as an option on your settings. So for Windows, this is Windows 11, I believe. It's a little bit hidden here under the options, and then I have to go to view, and then um, this hide extensions for known file types. That was checked before, so that's unchecked now, which that means that it shows it. Uh, some of the previous ones, it was actually a little bit easier. There was like um, under a view tab, I think there was like a checkbox that said, you know, show extensions or hide extensions. So you do need to see the extension so you can rename this so you can do re renaming a couple ways you can right click it and click this rename you can click this rename uh, you can also click once wait and then click again and wait a second and that will allow you to rename it but you need to take this dot txt and rename it to dot ps1 when you do that windows gives you a warning say hey if you change that file type or uh, that file extension it changes the file type and yes, that's what we want to do. All right, so now if I double click here for the first time, it does uh, do a little bit of thinking. And this is the Windows um, security stuff checking out the file. And it knows it's a script. It knows that it is um, not, um, you know, authorized or it's an unknown publisher. And so it's going to ask you if you want to open it up. Now, um, I'm going to tell it not to do it before opening this file because I trust it and it's just showing you this is just the text files which is not actually opening up powershell itself so double clicking just opens up the the text file but this is where we go back to where i told you before and you do want to make sure if you have not done this you copy this code here to set ex execution policy and you you want to run that in powershell so to do that you can go here to your windows thing you type in powershell you can run it. Mine opens up on my other screen over here. And then I just right click on this uh, screen and that's going to paste that stuff in here. What this is saying is uh, the execution policy, so when it will uh, run or execute a script. Um, and we are setting that and we're telling it that they can be remote signed. And um, you can also do unrestricted, which is even more open. But if I do this, it's going to say, hey, are you sure you want to do that? Um, oh, this is this is a great lesson, actually, because this is just saying, hey, this is denied um, because I did not run it as administrator. So if you get this, it means that you have to run PowerShell as an admin. So to do that, I just close it back out. And this time when I type in PowerShell, I can, I can click run as administrator. Now it's going to give me a pop-up that you probably can't see that says, do you really want to allow this program to make changes to your computer? And the answer is yes. Now I just right-click again. I'm still in the exact same thing, but now I'm admin. And now it says, hey, if you do this, um, you know, then it's going to change the policy. You can click here and learn more, or I, mean, I guess copy and paste and learn more. And you can say yes or yes to all. And... Um, I just got one, so I said yes, and now my new policy is set. 
And then if you want to check and just make sure, you can uh, type in git dash execution policy and it tells you there's remote sign. So that um, confirms that I did um, get that set correctly. And you only have to do that once. You won't have to do it again on your computer uh, unless you do like a reinstall Windows or something. So um, that's there. So let's go back um, to this paste bin file that we downloaded. We changed the PS1 script. And now we're going to right click and say run with PowerShell. Now again, this first time is it popped up over on my other screen. But it'll just pop up here. Now it's going to ask for your gateway password. And again, this is very important that you get this right. So my top secret password is Nader Tater 1 2. The nice thing about this is that you can see it visually. It's not hidden. And um, in case you're wanting to hack my stuff, that is not my typical password on anything. But um, if I enter in the wrong password, this script does not tell you. If you were to notice one of the first things on here um, for error action preference, it says silently continue. I am not um, that n knowledgeable about PowerShell stuff, but I have to imagine that tells me if something were to error out, it doesn't, it's silently continue means it just keeps on going and doesn't alert you anything in the PowerShell. If you open up PowerShell ISE, you can actually see errors in there. But uh, anyways, this is now the four options that you have. And you can download the config file to make changes. You can download it just to verify changes. And then you can reboot the gateway um, with a pressing the three or you can also upload backup settings so this is allows you to download the config file and then it allows it forces and installs them or puts them back onto the unit itself so I'm going to show you the option one which is to make changes so I'm going to put it let me have this uh, file for a little bit lower just so you can see it all live here so if I hit one Now it opens up this config.txt file. Now if you looked over here, you would see it actually created this backup dash config dash 1159.14. That is, um, means that it's midnight basically. It's um, you know, 11 p.m. 11.59 and 14 uh, seconds is ba basically what it's saying there. And here is my current config file on here. So what we want to do here is um, we can change stuff. So for this, you can change things, uh, all of these items after the colon is the setting that you can change. So for most people, it's the is radio enabled. That's false for mine. So if you look here, my 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi my radio is not enabled so that Wi-Fi is off and then on my 5 gigahertz side you can see my is radio enabled is true so right now I have it set up so I just have 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi coming off of this for a few reasons but if I want to make that so that all of my Wi-Fi is off I can do that right here as well and I would just change this is radio enabled true I would change that to false you have to spell it right <laughs> So um, that, that is another thing that you got to watch out for is typos. You can't get rid of commas or change spaces. You have to be very precise with it. Um, you can also change other things in here as well. If you really wanted to, you could change the number of clients. You could, um, you could change the bandwidth. The problem is I don't know what some of these other options are for like the, uh, the channel. I actually don't know the syntax to use to have it correct. But you can turn off airtime fairness by just saying false. But you can also change your Wi-Fi password. You can change the encryption mode. You can also change the transmission power for all these. So once you change it, and all I did here was change that um, is radio enabled uh, to false, which is different than broadcast. So is broadcast enabled? That is if the SSID is hidden but that doesn't stop it from broadcasting. It just means that um, you have to know what the name of the Wi-Fi is. So um, let's just go ahead and uh, save that. And all this is going to do is turn off my five gigahertz Wi-Fi. So I'm gonna save it as, 
because if you look right here, it tells you to rename the backup um, that you want to uh, load back in there as backup dash config. So I'm going to follow that verbatim backup dash config text. I'm going to double check that. Yep, it's in that same folder. So it does have to be in the same folder that your um, PS1 file is in. So there it is. You can see it just popped up here backup.config. I'm not going to close this out and come back over here. And it realized I had closed it out now. And now I'm going to upload them. So I'm going to hit 4 and hit go. And now it's uploaded this backup.config text. So now what I can do is download it to verify my changes. So I'm going to hit 2. And it says it can't find it. So if it says that, that means that it did not connect properly and did not come down. So it might be because this unit stopped the talking because I just uploaded the config files and it's like um, re, it's not restarting because the unit actually is stays on. But I think it might be doing some like little reset. So I'm gonna tell it no. But this this is how you know it did not actually um, complete the process, even though there's no error on the power cell so i'm gonna try it uh one more time see if it works now there we go so i just did it a little bit too quick uh, but now we can go in here and say is my radio enabled for five gigahertz and it says false and so that 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 setting held true all right so that's really all there is to it and that allows you to easily turn on and off wi-fi adjust your transmission power all those other little um settings and then if you want to return it back to stock, there's a couple ways. One, when you first did this your first time, you know, it saves that backup config. You could rename it to something else. But this tells you um, what the settings were on the device from the factory. So you can re-upload that. Or you can press and hold the reset button on uh, the back of this guy. And that will restore it back to factory default. So... Either one of those would work for you. All right, well, I hope that was a help to you guys. I'll leave that out there. This is something you guys can mess with and play with the different settings. You really cannot break anything with it. Uh, worst case is the configuration is wrong and like your Wi-Fi won't work or something, but you can always hit the, um, the reset button on this device and or uh, upload your backup copy of config to get things working back correctly. So just give it about 30 seconds or a minute or so after you push a config file for everything to, to work and hold. Like the Wi-Fi does not turn on or off instantly. It does take a, a little bit of time for that to happen. But it should not uh, come back on or change back after you reboot the um, gateway or, or anything like that. So give it a try. Let me know how it works. Thanks.